And this time I'm working on a vintage Technics amplifier. This is proper vintage. It's as old as me. This has been sent in to me by Richard, who's clearly a patient man, because I've had this quite a long time, nearly a year. Ooh. And this is a Technics SU 3500. It's very solidly built. No plastic on this. It's got a lot of knobs and switches. I'm not sure they're all quite necessary. We've got separate tone controls for left and right. Wow. It's only got one volume knob, so it's not one of these dual mono things. Oh, it felt a bit funny there. Oh. Something very strange going on here. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I started stripping it already. And I've not seen this before. It's actually got a selection for two different phono inputs. Two record decks. Bet that was posh. And you can select the different impedances for different types of cartridges. I don't know which way around they are. Probably this is like a moving magnet and this will be crystal cartridges probably. <laughs> They've really gone to town with the speaker outputs. You've got stereo, reverse stereo. Then there's left and right added together. Then just left, just right. That's somewhat comprehensive. <laughs> I can't think why you'd want to do all that. And you got these filter switches, just adding more complexity. Love it. Although the switch cap's missing there. Hmm. I guess I'm expected to fix that later. <laughs> Having a cheeky look at the rear of this, and there's as many sockets as there are buttons on the front. Two final inputs, tuner, and two auxiliaries. They like to double up on this, don't they? And it takes two tape decks. I didn't spot that before. It's got the pre out and main in links. That's nice. Don't always get those. And four pairs of speaker terminals, of course, main and remote. <laughs> and it wins another award for the shortest cable I've ever had. <laughs> wow. It's as barely as long as the amp itself. <laughs> so I'm going to have to take the plug off this so I can connect it to a safe block. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Another 13 amp fuse. <laughs> it doesn't need that much. <laughs> And get the old safe block out. Just clip the wires in. Just connecting to the speaker terminals. Come on, screw on terminals. They're a bit of a tight fit, really. I say tight fit. I mean they're a bit close together and a bit small. <laughs> These are easier to connect up, I tell you. <laughs> As long as you don't get them mixed up. Richard has told me it makes a loud buzzing noise and then cuts out, so I don't think I need to connect any inputs. But I will need to monitor the output on Old Faithful here. But if it's a loud buzzing, I'll probably need to um, knock these right down. <laughs> well, the dim bulbs are doing their job. That's telling me there's a big short circuit in this. Oh dear. And if I do that again, Oh, we see the one channel go. That's the right hand channel. That's what moved. That's what's in trouble. We can disconnect all this now. That's told us enough. So, it's time for the lid to come off. You can tell this was high end at the time, all metal construction. Piece of art this is. This is a really good idea, the selector switch has got a long shaft and the switch is actually right at the back, right close to the input sockets. So it's picking up much interference. And right underneath that, I assume that's the phono preamp board, covered in dust mind you. And out of the preamp is a line level signal which isn't so sensitive and uh, all the switching's around here. These will be the tone control boards no doubt because <laughs> those are the tone control knobs. And we've got a nice big chunky transformer and big caps here. This is only delivering 100 watts per channel, and that's reassuringly large stuff there. And these are clearly the power amp modules, and they're even on plugs. <laughs> I like that. And the bottom cover's removable, and I think that's a good idea if I take that off now. And being 70s lead solder, there won't be any dry joints. I'm pretty sure of that. And of course there's a spider web in it. Yeah, hopefully there's no spider anymore. But I guess it's worn by the transformer. <laughs> I haven't quite decided the best way to go about this. Do I repair it, then service it? Or do I service it and then repair it? Hmm, I think I'll take the amp module out first. And this is the underneath of the power amplifier module and from what I can tell, there's only three screws holding it in. So it should just pull out, lovely. This amplifier module is quite tidily built. I can't see anything visually wrong. I swear I do notice these transistors 
Uh, these are quite new. LS stands for lead free. There's no way that was a thing in the 70s. And this is the schematic of the amplifier module itself. There's not a great deal in there. I've searched back to where all these traces go and picked out what voltages should be present on there. Pin 4 is a feedback signal for this. It goes through a 6JK resistor straight to the speaker output. That should be easy to simulate. So I'm going to put some pins in here just to make them easy to clip onto. Actually I don't need pin 4 because I'm just going to solder resistor directly on the board. This is 68K for the feedback. Just bend that over there, general direction. <laughs> Well, I don't have enough power supplies to satisfy the voltage requirements precisely, but I think we'll get away with it for what we're testing. We've got a 24 volt supply that goes on here. The ground goes on pin 3. Pins 5 and 6 are both a negative rail. And pin 10 there is a positive. We squeeze another positive from there. In between there. I hope they don't short out. <laughs> That's used two power supplies at once. I've got this one over here doing the 24 volt supply. This one's doing the dual 40 volt rail. And this is the only high voltage dual rail supply I've got. So, <laughs> we'll have to make do with that. But I just tidied this wiring up a little bit just to make sure there's a bit of clearance between all the connections. <laughs> Messy mark. Okay, from the left. That's the bias supply, 24 volts, no problem there. Negative 40, positive 40. I think we all saw the trace disappear off the bottom of the scope. <laughs> Positive rails on current limit, down to 3 volts. So we've got about 1 watt being dissipated somewhere. See if the camera will pick it up. And I do see something glowing down there. So if I'm not mistaken, this left hand heat sink's a bit warmer. And that transistor's glowing away. <laughs> I think we've got a lead. Yeah, this one here, that's a bit warm. So that is actually TR407. Let's have a look in the drawings. So here it is, this one here. I'll highlight it in orange to show it was warm. It's probably knackered as well. <laughs> right, we'll unsolder that. And out it comes. So this is a C1567, or 2SC1567 <laughs> is its full name. But is it faulty? That's the real question. Oh, <laughs> there's uh, nothing wrong with this. <laughs> False alarm. So if this is getting warm but not faulty, it's probably tipping current into a short circuit and most likely I think it's this transistor here. It's the main output transistor, so you can bet your life base two emitters shorted. You can see where the transistor was, this pink here goes to the base of this transistor here. So we're looking for a short here. And that's not a short, it is pretty low, but it looks like a 68 ohm resistor somewhere to me. Yeah, and that makes sense. There we have it, 68 ohms from base to ground there. And then here we have, what is this, 0.47 ohms. Yeah, that's what it is. That's fine. So why is this drawing current then? It must have a problem down here. TR408 maybe? And there it is, right next door. Before I get them confused, I'm just going to pop this one back in. Nothing wrong with that. And out you come. Come on. <laughs> and this is a 2SA794. Let's see how that fares. So base to uh, the collector. That's okay. Oh, that's okay. All about shorts there. Oh, got you. We found the short. So TR408 here. This was shorted straight through. Like that. Question is, what caused it? Should check these power transistors again. Yeah, this one's good. Collector, this one's fine. Same again. No problems. Now it turns out Richard's already replaced those transistors, which why they're not the original ones, but he has had the foresight to send these to me. I don't know which ones came out of which channel, but it's a good idea to test them. Start with the 2SA663s. Just check these. The base is on the left here, so to the emitter. That one's good. To collector, also good. 
and this one's fine as well. I've checked there's no shorts straight across like we had before. No, they're good. Now those are two SC793s. Let's go the right way around. So to the emitter, that doesn't look good. 0.1 volts. Hmm. Oh, and the same here. Oh. Shorted. Yeah, what about this one? That one's fine, 0.5 volts, 0.5 volts there, no shorts. Just this one that's bad. Hmm. So the 2SC793 is TR409, which is here. Oh, that's a surprise. I was expecting it to be over here. Hmm. So that's shorty collector to emitter. Ah, okay, this is making a story. So if this is actually shorted straight through there, that's going to put 40 volts straight through here into here. So this has got across it minus 40. Yeah, 80 volts across there. Makes sense now. That's just the root cause. I can get on with finding a replacement for this thing. It's got old. I bet the parts are obsolete. Always worth a peek in the parts drawers, but yeah, no joy this time. I've made an impromptu data sheet for this from scouring the net, but basically it's rated at 100 volts and half an amp. Other thing to note really is the gain, somewhere between 130 and 330, so I'm going to find something that will do something like this. You can still get the old transistor as new old stock from anywhere from a fiver to 15 quid, depending on how unscrupulous your uh, supplier is. But I've decided to have a look through these drawers and i found something that will do. And here it is! It's a 2SC4793. It's in a slightly different package, but it'll fit. The pinout's actually backwards, so I'll have to install it that way around. But, yeah, no, never mind. Voltage-wise, we got 230 volts, so we're much better off. Current, this transistor will do a whole amp. And we just need to check the gain. Get the transistor tester on this. It's a handy little tool. Just clip the uh, clips onto the legs. And hit go. There we go, gain of 132. Perfect, it's just in spec. I think we can use it. I bent the legs in a way so it fits in this weird hole space that they've done. To get them to line up. Oh, it just won't go in. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, that one hole looks a bit smaller. So it goes in there, yep. And that one, fine. This one, no. Okay. See if I can open it up a bit with a little drill. Because it's an old single sided board, there's no through hole plating to worry about destroying. Might just be a blob of solder. Whatever it was has gone now. Let's try that again. That's better. Perfect. Let's see what it does now. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't look any different at all. <laughs> Maybe it does need the different supplies at different voltages. I didn't think that would matter. Hmm. Oh well, we'll try it. I see what I can configure here. I need that one on. Um, what do we need to do here? Another ground. From there to there. I'm going to use this as a plus or minus 30 volts. Actually, I'll just neaten those up and move that over one. It'll still work. <laughs> a bit less dodgy. Interesting. What's going on? Oh, I see. That's the 30 volt rails. That's the power transistors going a bit mental. I think the oscillation is um, the response time of this power supply. <laughs> oh, crikey. Yeah, something wrong with that. Actually, when you set in the bias, it tells you to measure 15 millivolts across this test point. And this test point goes across a 0.47 ohm resistor, so that's 32 milliamps. And we're putting in 500 milliamps. Yeah, it's definitely not a lack of current. I think as a sense check, I'm going to take the other module out and see how that performs. It'd be good to have a reference, see how a working one works. <laughs> Just transfer these pins over.
That looks more promising. Oh, I spoke too soon, it's in current limits as well. What am I doing? I mentioned before that these aren't the original transistors, but I've checked out the data sheets for them and they'll do the job. But I am suspicious, so I should check them. I don't know where they came from and I don't know if they're genuine. Now these have got a current gain somewhere between 20 and 70 if they're genuine and when I've seen the fake ones they tend to read about 200 or 300. <whistles> 35, that's good, that's pretty much in spec. Let's check this other one as well. Hundred and fifty-four. That's dodgy. That's way out as well. Hmm. Oh, I forgot the feedback resistor. I don't know if that matters. Probably not a good idea to <laughs> miss it off. <laughs> no difference at all. So I'm taking these transistors out as well. Check them. One five four again. Hmm. I mean, they're matched. <laughs> and this is the one thirty. I suppose this is going to measure something like thirty five. Thirty four. Hmm. I'll check the gain of the original two SC seven nine three. Just to see what the originals were like. Oh, 36. Interesting. And the 2SA663. I am wondering what this is going to measure now. 30 odd, I reckon. 35, do you think? 95. I don't know what to make of this. Let's check the other one. This is the last one I've got. Ninety-six. Well, it's pretty consistent. Maybe they don't need to be so well matched. I'd have thought they'd be a bit more closely matched than they are. I mean, there is adjustment for the DC offset, so has it got enough range? I powered it up without the power transistors in, and it doesn't pull loads of current. It's drawing, what, 9 milliamps on the negative channel, but nothing on the positive rail. And the output's sitting at pretty much zero volts. It's sort of behaving. And more surprising, if I connect an input signal, just on there, it pops out the output, looking quite good. That's about 20 volts peak to peak. So in the schematics, that's these two removed. So the signal on these two seems to be working perfectly. If I just remove that input signal, see if I can adjust the bias current, just balance it up a bit. Well, this is having no effect whatsoever. Hmm. Yeah, what's wrong? So the bias current is adjusted with this part here, which drives the base of this transistor, TR406. Ah. And there it is, lurking in the heat sink. Hmm, let's check it. Let's measure it in circuits, an NPN, so a positive lead on the base. Collector, well that looks okay. It's 0.6 volts. 0.9 volts, hmm. That's not terrible. No shorts there. No. Hmm. I just measure base to collector. Well, that's okay. Base to emitter. Oh, open circuit, blown emitter. It's a 2SC828, and I'm pretty sure I haven't got any of those. So I'm going to check in this old book and see what the equivalents are. And here we are, it's a little NPN transistor, only 50 milliamps. 
They can be replaced with a BC182L. No, those I have got. Let's get these out of the way. It's not those. Where are they? There's one. Pull these sleeves off the legs. So we'll reuse those on this new one. Let's pop it in these holes. If the legs line up, come on. There we go. <laughs> Let's try that now. Well, we've got 7 milliamps now, that's different. If I try and adjust the bias. Look at that. We've got control. Okay. <laughs> now, this is progress. Now, I'm going to put the power transistors back on. Let's get this heatsink back in the right place. Put the PNP transistor back in. Pop a screw in. And the other side. And pop the flat washer on, then the spring washer, then a little nut. Now the NPN one, the NTE Let's see how it works now. Beautiful. <laughs> 26, 27 milliamps bias, 28 I was warming up a bit. It's supposed to be 32. If that sits at 32, I'll be really impressed. I'm just going to measure the DC offset. Let's put a ground in there. Take our output terminal. Minus 10 millivolts, that's not bad really. Just want to see if I can adjust it. Look at that, beautiful. Now the bias has settled about 17 milliamps. I'm just going to uh, tweak that just up a little bit. Actually, this bias is a bit all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I think the pots might be a little bit crusty. Just give them a squirt of some pot cleaner. <laughs> Give that a good old work around. I leave these in a central position because <laughs> I've really lost place of where they are. <laughs> Just see how stable that is. Yeah, it's not jumping around so much now. Even if I tap it. <laughs> Let's give it that input signal. Yeah, looks nice and clean, doesn't it? Oh, now it is jumping around again. Oh, the bias is completely gone. What's going on? Ah, there we are, look. Have you got a bad connection? Yeah, we've got something wrong here. I don't see any trouble, but I'm just going to re-solder it. Just in case there's a dry joint somewhere. Yeah, that's no better. I think it might be the transistor itself. Put this transistor in the curve tracer just to give it a bit of a kick in. Let's turn the voltage up on this. We see how it goes, we've got 10 milliamps per division here. So we've got now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 70 milliamps. The thing's good for 120. We've got 50 volts across here. We'll give it a bit of a flick. Hmm, don't see any trouble. Let's give it a bit more welly. 10 watts. Give it a bit more power. A little bit more. I don't want to blow it up if I don't have to. <laughs> oh, it's just died on us. That has no effect on it at all. Flicked it again. Oh. 
Oh, it's doing this all on its own now. Yeah, thermal cycling. <laughs> that's what that's called. Unfortunately, this transistor's knackered. Oh well. I found this pack of transistors here. These are D44 VH10Gs. These are actually 80 volt rated and 15 amps. Um, I think they might do. We'll try and match them closest to the original one. This is the original one which breaks down when it warms up. I'm going to put the first of the test ones in there. Let's see how it goes. The original one. New one. Oh, a lot higher. I'm going to put that in the higher pile. <laughs> Try the next one. Very high too. <laughs> oh, better. It's not off the screen. There we go, compared to the original one. It's not miles out. Hmm, could work. Whilst we're looking for thermal stability, I might put a bit of heatsink compound just behind this transistor. Just push it in. Just that bias a bit more. That's been on for a good while now, and 33 milliamps each. I'm pretty happy with that. It's quite stable. I'm happy this amplifier module's working correctly now, um, but I'm going to replace this cap because these old Matsushita caps. They have a reputation of getting corrosion problems, and there's only one on here. What's going on there? <laughs> Sold the damn you. Final part, take this resistor off. <laughs> okay, brilliant. So you've got one working now, I reckon the other one is exactly the same. Yeah, we already found this failure here. What about this? 0.37 volts. 0.95, that's what we had before. Yeah, it's the same. Put those plastic sleeves on the legs again. This tracks are torn here. Um, don't think I did that, did I? Oh well, just bend the legs over just to uh, make sure they make good contact. Let's see if I fix this one as well now. 24 volts on, 30 volts on, and the 40 volts. Oh no! Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Short circuits again. I've probably done something silly. I'm going to check what I've changed on here. Well, I did change TR408, and it's never worked since I changed that. <laughs> what have I done? TR408 is actually a PNP transistor. Have I got that wrong? PNP, put your negative lead on the base. We should have some volt drop there. Oh, we haven't. And we haven't. Oh. Is it just the wrong way around? There it is. Oh. What in my haste? I put the wrong transistor in. <laughs> Whoops. Well, the desolder's blocked. Have to rod the uh, nozzle. Which is still very hot. But you can only rod it when it's hot. <laughs> it 
So PNPs, what have I got? Oh, MJE350, that'll do. Try and bend its legs to get in. Funny hole spacing, honestly. So does it work now? Yes it does. <laughs> DC offset's not terrible, 25 millivolts. I'm calling that pretty much zero. <laughs> but just a bias for the ceramic screwdriver because the metal one was interfering it with the other one. Let's bring that up. Perfect. Let's get that output back into the scope. Let's put a signal in this thing. And that's perfect. <laughs> and that's both of them working. Brilliant. Let's put them back in the amp, see if they work there. Not so fast, like every great drama, there's a cliffhanger at the end. If you want to see what happens, make sure you watch the next one. Catch you next time.